So welcome back. We're going to start in the next steps on the weasel. That will be gluing the upper and lower hull halves together and working on all the detailing that goes around. Again, we're not doing road wheels yet because we'll do those before we do tracks. I want to be able to paint behind them. Uh, tracks are workable when they're built, so I'm not too worried about that step right now. I want to get the upper hull done. I have found a figure that will work for the crew. Uh, I can also install it after assembly, so yeah, I'm just going to shoot the interior with some uh, NATO black, and that will hopefully uh, hide any non-detailed areas, and uh, we'll see the figures more than we see the interior of the model. So, all right, let's get started on the next step. Like I said, I'm going to shoot some NATO black in here real quick, and then we'll get back to assembly. And it's over there. <laughs> Gotta stand up and get it. Using mission models for the NATO Black, I I have mixed feelings on mission models paints. Some of them stick really well. Color range is excellent. Um, Others, especially their lighter colors, like their tans and their whites, reactivate when you are using things like decal solutions or anything else on them, even after they've been sealed with a clear sealant. So, not saying don't use them, just buyer beware and plan ahead. There we go. There we go. I say I know it's clean. <laughs> Helps my work on camera, doesn't it? And the paint seems rather inconsistent. Uh, uh, uh. Press on. This is a live stream I'm recording for YouTube as well, so all my flaws won't be in here. So if you're watching this on YouTube, it's live, unrehearsed, unplanned. Uh, another thing you're missing out on is the music. Right now I've got Junkie XL playing, uh, Beauty That Never Fades, used in the Animatrix. My airbrush is a Badger 150 that has seen a lot of better days. Um, doesn't exactly need replacement, but I definitely need to take it out of service for a bit. Give it a thorough clean. Maybe put it through an ultrasonic cleaner. And then evaluate all the seals inside and replace those if I need to. Yes, I understand I could send it back to Badger for a full reverb. I'm able to do it myself. If I can get all the parts, I'll just do it myself. If you haven't noticed from the last long, long form video, I tend to do things myself a lot. I'm going to thin this paint out a little bit. Personally, everyone's always raving about Tamiya thinner or whatever AK or Meg are throwing out there for their thinners. I use Windex. It hasn't really failed me. Your mileage may vary. I'm sure there's somebody out there who will comment, oh, I use this and never have problems. Oh, this is what I use. There we go. Shot of Windex and a little bit of back foam. I'm also going to paint more of the interior, as I can't remember if you can see a lot of it. You can see a lot of it through the exhaust. And I think I just emptied it all.
I don't know why it's being inconsistent today. Cup's full. It's obviously spraying. Pressure's good. Hello, Airy Studios. If you are on YouTube watching this and you enjoy it, um, please consider coming over to my Twitch channel, The Busy Builder, and following there for any future video recordings. Subs here on YouTube are always appreciated. Uh, subs on Twitch are even more appreciated. And they allow me to continue to make projects like this happen. Trying to get this mission model's paint to spray, so that way, when I put the driver in, you don't see the fact that the interior has no driver's compartment, and you can see a lot of the interior through the exhaust area, which I'll show you on the finished um, tow variant that I've got sitting next to me. We're not going to do a lot of painting today regardless. Get this laid down. Painting on this model does take a bit of pre planning. The uh, exhaust on it, especially. So it's got a photo wedge cage that goes over it, but you need to get underneath it adequately sprayed in the base made of green color as well. And then for those who want to weather on the exhaust. Probably from that storm that came through. Why did it only play the one that's up? Weird. I'm going to go through the instructions really quick, make sure there's nothing that needs to go inside before I glue the top and bottom halves together. And I can do that while it's still wet. It's not going to be a sealed environment, so it will dry out as it needs to. Yeah, this paint didn't want to uh, play nicely today. I wish I could have the music playing on the YouTube video. Unfortunately, with their stringent copyright laws, I can't have background music on there because it's not like I'm doing this to rebroadcast music. I'm just doing it to have something to hear. Uh, so, hold it down. Hey, Ellie Cat. You're going to have to stay off the desk today. We might have a visitation by the cat. I can't promise anything. So the instructions have me going along adding all these loops and all these details before we do the hull assembly. That can actually cause trouble because it. I want to tape it together as I glue it, and it won't allow that to happen easily without repeatedly breaking them off. It seems like the only things I'm going to have to add before assembly are the periscopes. Yeah, it's the only thing that goes in before everything else. Okay, so let's get those out.
And it does provide you with clear periscopes. I'm just going to paint over them. Paint them black, maybe give them some purple ink. No, you can't come up, little girl. I know you want to. If you want to come up, you got to get in the chair. Not in my lap. And we have Cat. Those watching the stream, this is Allie. And uh, she's a little stray, I found, at work. Brought her home. Somebody dumped her in the middle of the winter. She was just a little two-month-old kitten. I found her. Yeah. And now she's a constant pain in my side as I'm trying to do live streams and work on models. So... I won't cut this out. The, the YouTube videos are just rebroadcasts of these live streams. Uh, that's just so that the people there can get the experience. Now she's sniffing the microphone. Hi, girl. Yeah. Boop. <laughs> so, any cat lovers out there, say hi. Hi, Allie girl. Yeah. I found her with her brother. Her brother got adopted. So, nobody adopted her. We kept her. And she's got a good home here. She's been fixed and vaccined and vaccinated and all that stuff. Yeah. Tiny girl. Come on. Down you go. Girl. All right. But before we get started on this, so you don't have to look up the short, I did bring the other version that's already finished. This is the toe variant. We're going to go for a similar look. I may try and make some of the barracuda netting. Some of the camouflage netting to put around it and uh, figure out a way to do like pine branches, stuff like that. Very nice models when complete, inexpensive, easy to build. If anyone's wanting to get into larger armor than World War II stuff that's currently available, give the Tacon Weasels a try. Okay. Good girl. Stay down there. Yep. I even gave her the box top and she didn't want to she didn't want to use it. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. If you're seeing this on YouTube, it'll be Monday when I upload it. I'm recording this on a Sunday. Twitch likes to have their exclusivity, so I give it to them. I'd have to go grab some ibuprofen. And if there's times I go quiet, it's just I'm enjoying the build, enjoying the music. For once, my head's feeling kind of empty <laughs> in a good way. Mittens may join us in a little while. So how are you doing, Airy Studios? Are you uh, assembling your desk? Nope. <laughs> Just 
Just one of those days for you too. I'm feeling a little better. Felt productive yesterday. Completed more training at the new job. Um, came home, did some yard work in the backyard. Got it all trimmed up. Then we had a amazing thunderstorm roll through about 3 a.m. Woke me from a dead sleep. And it, it started out, like, I saw on the horizon out west past the lake, right? I saw just the clouds were twinkling that night. I even told the wife, you know, I was watering the lawn, because there was nothing in the forecast that said, ooh, thunderstorm coming. Um, but I told the wife, I have a feeling it's probably going to storm tonight while we're asleep. And sure enough, all right, which side goes up on these? I forget. And it started out as just like a low bass rumble that started moving through. So I thought there was somebody in a car, you know, just with the bass going and all that stuff. And it just got louder and louder and louder and pretty soon the lightning was striking right outside the window and the the flash and the sound were coming at the same time and then just as quickly she she found the box good just as quickly it receded um and then it brought through rain that it moved fast but it drenched everything so happy for that You sure when you're gluing these in, you get them the right way around so the periscope is facing forward? Because it could be very easy to glue it in backwards. But another indicator is also the forehead pad molded in. I'll probably just slap some paint on these real quick. Just to hide them in the shadows. I know they should probably be white. Um... There's going to be a figure in the way, and I'm not too worried about it. Did I not scrape that? I did. There we go. I know you can order these from Sprue Brothers, and I think Andy's Hobby Headquarters as well. And then... Got our driver figure that's going to just be about like that. So I think that'll go really well. Yeah, let's brush some NATO black on that, call it good. And feel free to ask questions. Um, this is for the live stream. Ask away. I may answer a question that somebody watching on YouTube probably has in their head as far as why and what and how. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, feel free to comment. Just keep it nice and pleasant. I know everybody has their opinions about how to build models and how they build their models. Don't whinge, don't whine, just build it. If it can't be built, work on something else. Come back to it or look for a better kit. I hate to say it like that, but sometimes that's what you gotta do. Those glued in.
And the fit on the kit is really good. But as you know, parts do warp after they've been injection molded and they're cooled. And just to get things to pop together better and stay together as I glue it, I'm just going to apply some tape once we get everything glued. Hold it down. And the reason I'm doing it this way is so I don't snap off all the pieces that get glued right here when I'm trying to get it all together. May need a little bit of sanding once it's all done, just to blend it all together. This is a welded hull in real life, and sometimes the welds are ground down, or they're just not very visible. After I get this put together, I'm going to run upstairs and grab some ibuprofen real quick for my knuckles. My right hand hurts like you would not believe. Gotta love arthritis. Especially the degenerative type. I'm sure somebody else would probably find a way to block that off. On the real vehicle, it's the exhaust for the tank. I'm not going to block it off. I want it to be open. Uh, it won't be as see-through as the one on the 20 or on the tow version. Because the turret blocks off, the tow version has an open hatch right behind it. So if you look carefully, you can see it. And I'm sure some aftermarket company out there is probably working on interior kits for these or 3D print files, so if people want to, they can print their own at home, or kits you can buy that are 3D printed. Maybe I could set up a YouTube stream when I do the painting on this and do it exclusively on there. So I will be right back. I'm not going to pause it or anything like that. I wish I had a be right back screen to put up. Um, I just need to get some ibuprofen and something to drink. And we'll continue on adding details. So one moment.
And we're back. I could also go way out in left field. All white knit UN markings on this. I don't think it comes with those on the sheet anyway. For the decals. It does not. It has decals for a Kosovo vehicle. I think... I don't know if we'll put the K4 markings on it. I feel that that's a bit overdone lately. Uh, we will make it a standard vehicle, though. And do the camo on it. Maybe do some ISAF research and... Uh, see what I need to put on there. I would really like to find 3D files for a G36K. I did notice on these at times, the driver and the commander slash gunner would have their G36s handy near their hatches on the outside. And uh, just little details like that. Did I, not, did I not glue that? I did. And always close your glue. It might be a pain to open it every time that you're using it. I've almost tipped it so many times in between. It's ridiculous. So here's where it gets tricky. Adding the fenders is pretty easy. This is not. It is in, in that it fits and it works but you have to leave this off until after you paint. And the bending of the photo etch does get a bit hair raising, but it works. This is so you can paint it, rust up the exhaust underneath to show that the heat has gotten to the metal and then put the actual uh, heat shield over it and go from there. Let's go back. Step five. Eighteen, twenty, and forty. So what did everybody do this weekend? Mine's actually just starting. Uh, started a bit yesterday. We had a bit of a, a personal thing happen here Friday night. Wife got into a car accident. She's fine, and uh, we're fixing the car as it is. Wasn't too badly damaged.
It's been a weekend. I just hope things start picking up soon. Put a little bit of glue along the lower edge, like capillary action, draw it around the part. There we go. I need to see if that fits flush or if it hangs perpendicular. This is where references come in handy. The instructions don't really show it too well. And they show you a close-up of the other side of the model, which does not have that particular detail part. So a good place to go is primeportal.net. They have tons of references of tons of vehicles. I could have sworn I had that in my bookmarks, but I guess I don't. Bingo, right there is the picture I need. It is perpendicular. Okay. So when you glue this part on, your first instinct is going to be, hey, let's just make it down against the tool, right? Like that. Nope, it's actually straight up and down like that. It does not follow the slope of the hull. There we go. Did I do the same thing on this or no? Was I ignorant for that one? Nope, I did the same thing. I did it right that time too. All right. I'm gonna save these for last. They're uh, lifting lugs. They go all the way around the hull. There's some here, there, there, there. They're all the same, so we're just going to do them in one shot instead of going, okay, let's put them here, start working on this side of the hull, grab, grab, grab. Oh no, I just knocked them off. Move the exhaust pipe on. That is part A11. I might put pictures of this up on Instagram as a work in progress tonight as well. We'll have to see how far I get. But I think this is a good choice for my YouTube series as well. It's a simple model. 
Um, doesn't require any advanced techniques. Aside from the photo etch, I'd say this is a pretty good beginner's model, believe it or not. We'll take these two pieces of tape off. Another reason I don't want to put these on is I want to be able to sand that seam. And it's going to require a minor bit of filler there. Just didn't want to tuck in. We'll see if we can get that to tuck first. Yeah, it seems like that whole corner is just out of whack, which is more my fault than the kit. Can do. A little bit of super glue. And a tap of baking soda. SX is a filler. The baking soda makes the glue kick. Some people like to mix it. Uh, unfortunately, if you're mixing it before you apply it, you can run the risk of the glue kicking before you even put it on the model. And it sands down nice and smooth. Just let that sit and fully cure while we work on the rest. And when we go do the sanding, we'll just get it sanded down. First, message from our sponsor, Pittance. Come on, boy. Up. What? No? I'll leave your room in the chair if you want to come up. And I was wrong, this is not the exhaust for the engine, this is the intake, the exhaust is back here. And I believe this represents the initial version of this vehicle. It does not represent the upgraded A1 version with the extra sights on the turret. Uh, if TACOM makes that, I don't know. There is a possibility somebody out there has files for it as well in 3D. If I find those before I get to the painting phase and I'm able to print and install them, I will. Wouldn't mind having the updated version. So we've done steps five and six. We're going to skip ahead to nine. Where'd he go? Weird cat. I don't know if you guys saw him in my face cam or not. He's getting up and getting down. What are you doing back there, huh? We're going to assemble the driver's hatch, but we're not going to install it. but we can use the hull as a jig to make sure all the parts we have to assemble are lined up properly because you've got the mechanism for the hatch rotation, the hatch itself, and a small locking tab goes right here. Who's that now? That's Mittens again. Hey, buddy. You can just see his tail sticking up out of the face cam over here. He likes to lay down behind me and warm my back up.
Looks like it just rotates outward for when it's unlocked. No, it's B13, not B. Where did I get B12 from? Maybe I'm thinking about Stray. <laughs> So this is the mechanism that latches the hatch down when they are in closed driving. I, I'm looking at pictures of the real thing to see what direction it rotates in when the hatch is open. Just so I don't mess up how I position it. In this picture, they've got it rotated back around to the closed position. But it looks like it would probably just rotate facing that way when open normally. Okay. I'm also going to be working on making these videos a little more accessible, so this one might only be an hour. So we may stop at the hatch for today, and I'll get it uploaded, see what the response is. The initial video, I, th I think, for you know my first outing for a long-form video, which is essentially just a stream uploaded, uh, it's gotten a lot of responses, but I think it was probably a little too long. And by responses, I mean it's been viewed plenty of times. If you guys like what you see, leave a comment on what you think I could do to make it better. Uh, I know it's hit or miss for long-form videos on YouTube a lot of times. Some people like them, some people don't. Some people like the more personal nature of a video like this, some don't. But if you're watching and you like what you see, just drop me a little, hey, I like it. Keep going. Just trying to make thing, make sure I'm doing what people want to see and not something completely out of left field. Make sure this is lined up right. It is. And when the model's done, this will be in the open position anyway, which will be that way. I need to see if there's any form of locking mechanism. There is. I was going to say, there has to be a mechanism here for when the hatch is open that keeps her from swinging back in front of the driver because... That would cut off the driver's head if it's not if you're not careful. And it's actually this piece right here. So what I will be doing is shaving that off and raising it up with a small piece of styrene rod and replacing it with a, another piece of styrene strip. Because when the hatch is open, this raises up and engages the hatch right here to keep it from swinging that way. That's good. And I'd like to document as much of the build on this as possible. So I'm trying my best to not work on it off stream. I haven't touched it off stream since the last uh, video I uploaded, the part one. <clears throat> So we can we can push on and do a couple other things. B twenty one times two. B seven B three. Little ham 
handle here. So I like to get the handles trimmed as close as possible, glue them to the model, and then I go back once the glue is dry on the model and carefully trim them up to clean them up. We don't get a ping here. Generally, I find a lot of problems I have with kits that I build are problems that I've caused. I've seen, I think I mentioned this in the last video, but I'm going to reiterate again because it's become more apparent again. I have seen a radical uptick in what you could call whining about kits. A lot of companies these days, if they're making a new tool of something, you'll know it. You'll see it. They'll announce the hell out of it. It'll, it'll even say it on the box, uh, especially for companies like Revell Germany. If you're buying a model that you know has been out before, like you're aware that a particular kit has existed in the past, it's up to you, the buyer, to do your do due diligence and make sure that you're not buying that old kit if that's not what you're expecting. Don't, don't blame the kit as the problem if you buy something and it's not what you wanted. Even Polar Lights, when they uh, work on their Enterprise molds, They've retooled some parts for even the original 60s Enterprise, the kit that's probably the longest selling model kit of all time right now. They've retooled it and they will put on the box that they have retooled some parts. Airfix, uh, they're going a step above. And sorry, I'm trying to think uh, how to put it. Airfix is going a step above right now. And they're actually marking their older boxes with classic Airfix, which means you're you're buying the old kit, not the new tool. Um, Revell Germany has started putting Matchbox on certain 76 and 72nd scale kits they sell to show that they are the old Matchbox kits. But generally, if Revell releases something new, they put new tool on it. If they release something that's an old mold, they generally won't put old tool on it. But they don't advertise it as being a new kit either. So if somebody's tooling up a new 30-second scale Harrier, per se, they're going to let you know, hey, we're tooling up a new Harrier. Even Trumpeter did it. But don't say it as if it's some extreme B21, okay, effort to hoodwink people. It's probably not. It's just no new tool kit has been made of it, so there's no reason to announce that this is a, an old kit. Even AFB Club, they are re-releasing their weasels. And they've retooled parts to show, to reflect that it is, it, it's been updated. So now the 35th scale weasels will have more modern, up-to-date details in them. But I just have to ask that people stop being so obsessively reactionary when they buy a kit and it's not full of all the newfangled goodness, not everybody wants that. And not every company is going to make that. We've been spoiled by Dragon. We've been spoiled by even Tamiya in some regards. I'm going to let this dry overnight before I sand it, just so I know the, the plastic is actually hardened. And I don't want to install that yet because I could wind up ruining part of that. Alrighty. 
B39. And I know other people out there will be like, well, it's their responsibility. No. If I see a kit, say, at Hobby Lobby, especially if it's a Revell kit that I don't recall having seen before, I look it up before I buy it. I make sure that it's something I want to buy. Um, that way, if it is an older kit that I'm really not interested in, I don't buy it. I don't wind up wasting the money on it. Is that saying I don't like old kits? Oh, hell no. Old kits can be fun as hell sometimes. Um, maybe I'll do a companion video to this little spiel about how sometimes it is fun to take an older kit, like, say, the Monogram F4 Phantom, and just apply basic construction values to it. No photo etch, no aftermarket, no resin, just the kit. With one caveat when I did this kit, it was... It was an older issue kit. The side, the not the sidewinders, the AIM sevens, the sparrows. They had massive sink marks down the bodies. I replaced them with the ones out of an AMK F fourteen. Didn't do anything special, just straight swap because they didn't have sink marks, so they work. Other than that, the kit is straight out of the box. Did I have to replace them? No. Um, chances are no one's really going to be picking it up, but I knew the sink marks would be there, so I did. And I think that's how people need to look at the aftermarket as well, because another thing that's been going on, again, I've seen other people make videos on it, the aftermarket aspect of things You do not need to buy resin wheels and photo wedge sets to finish most modern kits out of the box. Notice I said need. It's a want. But when, it, when you come to your hobby stuff, all hobbies are, are wants, they're not needs. You don't need it to survive. But when it comes to hobby level stuff, you don't need resin wheels and photo wedge set to build the trumpeter striker. It can be built straight out of the box. Plenty of people have done it, and they look great. Uh, it's peer pressure that makes you think, oh, I need to buy all this stuff in order to do this model right. No, you don't. I bet I could look online right now if I really, really dug deep enough and find a ton of things to fix so-called problems with this, this kit. When I look at this model compared to pictures of the actual model, it's right. There's nothing inherently wrong with it. Somebody might say, oh, the anti-slip here isn't grippy looking enough. But it's there. If you want more grippy looking anti-slip, mask it off, stipple some new stuff on, sprinkle some chinchilla sand or whatever, whatever trick you use for it. But the kit is not inherently wrong because it doesn't have it. And because it's not up to a certain reviewer's standard. I think the hobby is losing a bit of objectiveness because everyone's trying to be like a almost like a shock jock reviewer. And it's very difficult to find straight, clean reviews on models. I'd like to say I know, I know how to fix that, but I don't. Um, all I can do is build them and give my, um, my personal, I almost want to say level-headed review of kits. I don't know if that's something I should start doing, is just maybe when I build a model, do a short review video afterward. 
just describing my personal experiences building it, but not going to such lengths as saying, oh, it didn't have this. This is the worst kit ever. Oh, it didn't have this. I'll never build this kit. Oh, it didn't have that. It didn't have photo etch. It didn't have resin. It sucks. No. Just keep it technical. Is the kit buildable out of the box? If it is, awesome. I'm not going to get out blueprints or plans or anything like that to check dimensional accuracy. It, can you buy it and build it and have it look like it does on the tin when you're done? Yes? Good. Maybe I should start doing that. Let me know what you think. That'll be it for today's weasel video, I think, because everything else is going to really start dipping into areas I need to let sit. So thank you for watching. Have a good day.